I'm having flashbacks. He's got that Beatles haircut, you know? <laughs> I'll take me some Denzel. This is Between the Lines. Oh, there's many that will tie for this designation of the worst sci-fi film ever. But let me give you, I'm not even gonna rank them. I'm just gonna give you okay, the worst several. One, Disney's The Black Hole from the 1970s. That madman is headed straight for the black hole. What'll we do? We wait. We're uh, just, I can't, don't, don't even, I'm having flashbacks just thinking about it. Because black hole is such a fertile subject with we can have a wormhole and a singularity in the event horizon and apparently none of them knew any of this. I was in high school. I could have been the advisor on that film and the film would have been a hundred times better. That's how much I knew about black holes in high school relative to this, this movie. Armageddon, okay, that's with Bruce Willis saves the world from an asteroid. I will make 800 feet. I swear to God I will. It was an entertaining movie, don't get me wrong, but it violated more laws of physics per minute than any other movie ever made this side of the galaxy, just saying. I did watch Interstellar and I commend it for how much attention they gave to scientific detail. In fact, I'm friends with one of the co-executive producers who is a physics professor at California Institute of Technology, and he co-wrote the story of Interstellar. So I, I applaud the level of science accuracy that they strive for. I found the story a little confusing. Uh, I was disappointed that two astronauts would be on this exotic planet and then get into a fist fight. No, no, this is, I'm not, no. <laughs> but uh, the, the conceiving of what a black hole might be as you go through it, uh, the time dilation that occurred when they're near the, the black hole planet. What's this gonna cost us, Brian? A lot. Decades. Oh, all of that was authentic and fascinating. We need more movies by marquee directors with marquee actors that treat science that seriously. I think about what I need for long space travels all the time. So if I could only eat one food, it would be pepperoni pizza. And drink one liquid, it would be a strawberry malted milkshake. And I think all I would need is, is a good library of music and some video account where I just could watch any movie I want. What better occasion to catch up would binge watch than a multi-year space voyage. I count Brian Cox as a friend, and I heard that he was like a pop star yeah. some moons ago. And plus he's got that Beatles haircut, you know? So that, that was not hard to believe. I could I accept that. Could it have been D. Ream? Yeah. Okay, all right. All right. <laughs> the most starstruck I've ever been was July 30th, 1973, off the coast of Northwest Africa. And I bore witness to a total solar eclipse. I was starstruck by what else but our star, the sun. I don't want a film of my life. I'm a servant of the curiosity of others, so I don't, I don't need me to be, I don't need that. That being said, if there's some movie that I happen to be portrayed in, the life of someone else where I happen to play a role, sure, um, let's get Denzel in there. <laughs> I'll take me some Denzel, Denzel Washington for sure. Awesome, thank you so much. Was that, that's all the, that's it? Okay.